Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem one from the hacker rank hour rank 30 contest entitled video conference. The problem states Bob is making a video conference software program. Whenever a new person joins the conference, Bob displays the person's name in the interface. However, displaying full names is tedious and takes much space, so he decided to display the shortest prefix which doesn't match with any prefix of any person who has already joined. Let's suppose the first person to enter the conference is Alvin. Uh, at this point, the conference will show uh, A, which is the shortest prefix uh, that is yet to be seen in another person's name because there are no other names. Now suppose the next person to join is Alice. The shortest prefix of Alice that doesn't match with any prefix of Alvin is A-L-I. So at this point uh, your conference display looks as follows. And if the full name of the new person, of a new person, matches completely with the full name of any person who has joined earlier, he will display the full name and add a suffix which indicates how many times the same name has occurred in the list so far. For example, if another person named Alvin joins, the list will look like this. So A, A-L-I, and then Alvin too. You are given the list of the persons who have joined the call in chronological order, and your task is to figure out how the final list will look. And the constraints for this problem is that the number of names we're going to be given is between 1 and 10 to the 5, the number of characters in each name will be less than or equal to 10, and all of the letters in each of the names is going to be lowercase. So let's take a look at another example to see how we would go about solving this problem. So here is our second example that HackerRank provided us with. The first example was covered in the problem statement. And we've got six names here, and you can see they are as follows. Uh, the four of them in the middle share uh, some S's and some A's, and then the one at the beginning and the end share an M. So the main thing or data structure that we're going to use to solve this problem is a hash hash set of strings. Um, so in C++, which is sort of what we're basing this visual solution on, uh, that's the unordered set. And basically what we're going to do is for each name as we process it, we're going to store each of the sub strings or prefixes uh, in this hash set. So going forward, we can check to see whether uh, the prefixes in future names already have been seen. And if so, we can just keep incrementing. So let's walk through how it would work for this problem. So we'll initialize our vector of strings, which is going to be our vector that we're going to return at the end of the day. Uh, answer, this is empty. The hash set is also empty. And the first name that we're going to process is Mary, because Mary comes into the conference first. So we're going to start by looping through each of the characters uh, in, our, in our name, and we'll have a temporary string that we'll call t, basically, and it's just going to represent each of the prefixes. So for the first one, it's just going to be equal to m. So what we'll do next then is we'll check our hash set s to see if there's the prefix m that exists there. Because it doesn't, uh, we're going to push it back into our vector, and then we're also going to insert every prefix into our hash set. And the nice thing about sets is they don't store duplicates, so even if you insert in, you don't need to worry about growing the size of your set. So at this point, we're going to sort of mark a Boolean variable inserted equal to true so that we know we don't need to grow our vector anymore because we have a prefix that is valid for Mary. So at this point, we're just going to loop through the rest of our prefixes and insert them into our hash set. So at this point, we have m and ma, and M, M, A, and M, R, M, A, R, and then finally Mary. So we've finished with Mary now, and we can move on to the next individual who is Stacy. So at this point, we're going to do the same thing, starting by looking at just the S. Uh, S does not exist in our hash set, so once again, we're going to push back this prefix into our vector of strings, and we're going to also insert it into our hash set. And we'll continue to do this now, similarly to what we did for Mary, so you'll end up with ST, STA, STAC, and STACY, Stacy. So it gets a little more interesting when we get to the third individual, uh, who is Sam. So we're going to look at the S this time, but when we look to see if it's in our hash set, at this point, the prefix exists. So we can't use that um, and push back into our vector. So we, are, we can insert this, but it won't uh, do anything because it already exists. And so we're going to move on to our next prefix, which is going to be SA. SA doesn't exist, so at this point, we're going to push back into our vector and then insert it once again into our hash set. So you can see how this sort of starts to work, and at this point we have all of the prefixes from Sam. 
Uh, for Samuel, uh, we can see that S, SA, and SAM all exist, so it's not until we get to SAMU that we have a valid prefix, so we push that back and insert SAMU, and then once we finish with Samuel, we'll also have these two prefixes in our hash set as well. Uh, then here's sort of a, an extra case that they mention at the end of the problem. When you see a name that already exists, we basically want to uh, append an integer to the end of it and use that as the prefix. So basically the way you can treat this is that if you get to the end of uh, looping through all of your prefixes and you still haven't been able to uh, insert it or push back it into the uh, back of your vector you can then basically just initialize an integer that starts at 2 and then you can increment that until you find uh, that prefix not in your hash set so there's no numbered SAMs here so we're just going to end up pushing back SAM2 uh, using you know string concatenation and then insert that into our hash set as well and we'll come back to this because this actually isn't a full solution. Um, and then last but not least, if we come to Miguel, you'll see that the M is already there. So we're going to end up needing to use the prefix MI, and then we'll insert the rest of our prefixes. Um, so that's the general gist of the solution. Use a hash set, uh, which in Java is going to be called hash set, and in Python is just a set. Uh, to store all the prefixes and then just for each name look for the first valid prefix if you get all the way through um, you're gonna have to find a number to append on to the end and then construct your vector or your list like that uh, however there are two problems with this solution so the first one is that there's a corner case where all the names are the same so imagine that our example is uh, 10,000 which is the maximum number of names we can have and they're all the same so imagine they're all Sam this is going to result in a complexity uh, that is quadratic because what's going to end up happening is you'll inf insert the first uh, SAM with an S and then every other one will go through the full loop and it'll get to the end and then you'll initialize your integer to 2 and then uh, the first one will be 2, the second one will be 3, but as that integer grows it's going to go all the way to 10,000 and so you end up with this nested loop uh, which is going to be quadratic and it's going to time out. So. Uh, it's not sufficient to just loop through your characters in your name and then append at the end by sort of initial, initializing an integer. The way to get around this is to just uh, declare a hash map that stores names that have already been uh, inserted. So at the very beginning, once we've inserted Mary, along with this hash set, we'll have a hash map that stores the count of the number of those names. And then before we actually do our regular algorithm of looping through the characters and checking for the prefixes, right up front we can just check, have we seen this name before? If so, uh, retrieve the value attached to the key, which is the name, and then we, in constant time we can figure out this too or if it's 900, you know, 90, whatever it is, we won't have to loop in linear time up to 990. We can just get that number right away. So that's the first corner case. Uh, at that point, we no longer have a quadratic algorithm, and so it'll pass all the test cases. But there was another corner case that a lot of people had difficulty solving, and I think it was very tricky and a little bit unfair of the problem because it's slightly ambiguous as to how you should treat this case. And that case is when you have a subname uh, later. And what that means is in this problem, we have Sam, Samuel, and Sam. But imagine if Samuel came first. So if we bump up Samuel, and at, at this point when we're at our first Sam, um, what our algorithm is going to do, it's going to look at our hash map to check have we seen this name before. We haven't. So then we're going to go and start looking at all the prefixes. We're going to find S. We're going to find SA. Oh, look, there's a duplicate there. That's a problem. So ignore that mistake. We're going to find S. Uh, or no, sorry, that's the vector. So the hash set uh, only has one SA in it. So the S, the SA, and then SAM as well. So it actually finds all the prefixes available. Um, and so depending on how you coded your algorithm, it would do either one of two things. It would either just output nothing uh, because it hasn't found a valid prefix, or uh, depending on how you sort of got your number, it might have uh, initialized SAM to 2 instead of you would never actually seen a SAM. You would have seen an S for Samuel and then SAM2 and SAM3. But the way they wanted you to treat this is basically even if the full name 
was seen previously as a prefix of another name. For example, if if Sam is the first time we're seeing Sam, even if this happens to be the prefix of another name, uh, still output the full prefix of Sam, um, which is, I think, a little bit, you know, they should have explicitly either explicitly stated how to deal with this case or given us a test case to see this. Um, so uh, hopefully if you struggled with this problem, that was the problem that you were struggling with and it, it makes sense now. And there was a lot of griping in the, in the comment section or the discussion section of this problem. So I definitely didn't see this immediately either. And it, it took me a, a couple test cases of writing it by hand to sort of figure this out. Um, so yeah, that's our full algorithm. So the way you deal with this second test case is basically once we've looped through all the prefixes, if our Boolean, uh, which is tracking whether we've been able to insert our prefix into our vector answer, uh, if it's still set to false, then push back or insert uh, the, the full name uh, at that point in time. So it's just an extra line, but it yeah, it's necessary in order to get a full solution. So with all that being said, let's take a look at our solutions. So here's our C++ solution. We have our function solve, which takes a vector of string names and returns a vector of string, which is going to be the prefixes that are associated with each of those names. Uh, so we're going to start by declaring our hash set S, our hash map M, and our vector of strings ANS stands for answer, which we're going to return at the end. And so then we have a range-based for loop where we're going to loop through each name in names. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to see if our name already exists in our hash map. Uh, if it does, what we're going to do is we're going to increment um, the value associated with the key value pair for that name. And then we're going to push back into our answer vector uh, the name plus a space plus uh, the string version of our value. And uh, if not, we're going to come, if, if the name does not exist in our hash map, we're going to come down to our else case, uh, initialize uh, the key value pair in our hash map uh, where the value is equal to one because we've only seen it one time at this point. And then we have our local string T, which is going to represent all of the prefixes. We have our Boolean inserted, uh, which at this point we're going to initialize to false. And then we're going to loop through, use another range-based for loop. Uh, which is going to loop through each character in our name. And then we're going to do a plus equals uh, to our prefix. And at this point, we're going to check, does our prefix exist in our hash set? And uh, if it doesn't, and we haven't been able to insert a prefix previously, then we will set our uh, Boolean inserted to true, and then push back the prefix at this point in time uh, into our vector answer. And note that once you've inserted once, this will get set to true, so this condition will never be satisfied again. Uh, but we still want to continue to insert all of the other prefixes after that point into our hash set. Um, and as mentioned, once you get through this uh, loop through each character in the name, if our Boolean inserted is still set to false, then we need to uh, push back the full prefix, which will be equal to the name at this point. So yeah, this is a very tricky case. And so once you get to the end of uh, the full range-based for loop for each name and names, uh, you can just return your vector of strings and that will do it for you. So we're going to look at the time complexity for this problem because they're slightly different from solution to solution and for the C++ problem it's going to be big O of n times s where n is the number of names and s is the number of characters in our string. So we know this is up to 10 to the fifth and this, the uh, names can only go up to 10 characters so this will definitely pass. Taking a look at our Java solution, very, very similar to our C++ solution, just slightly different uh, data structure names um, and methods that correspond to those data structures, but otherwise the code flows exactly the same. So initializing our hash set, hash set, hash map, and a list of strings, S, M, and L. So we don't have A and S anymore, we have L for list. And once again, we have our enhanced for loop. Uh, which is the equivalent of a range-based for loop in Java. And then we're checking similarly, does our name exist in our hash map? If it does, we come in, get the count of the number of times we've seen this name so far, so far update that count by using the put method. Uh, and then we want to add to our list the name plus, uh, once again, the uh, stringified version of our number plus one. Um, if it's not in our, if our name is not in our hash map, we once again come down to our else condition, 
we update our hash map, we initialize a string, uh, we initialize a boolean, we have another enhanced for loop here, and basically this code looks the exact same. It's just got contains and add as the methods instead. And similarly, once again, if we have it inserted at the end of this for loop, uh, we want to add this. And at the end, we just return L, the same as we did in the C++ solution. So uh, the time complexity for this problem is slightly different, and that's because uh, strings have uh, linear time complexity for the plus equals operation because strings are technically immutable. Um, so when you do a plus equals, you're getting a whole new string back. Um, so that's going to give us big O of n uh, times s squared. But because s is only goes up to 10, it's not really a big deal. And if you wanted to get this down to uh, big O of n times s, you could uh, swap this out for a string buffer and the solution would probably work. But due to the fact that you don't need it, it's probably a waste of typing time. And last but not least, taking a look at our Python solution. The most concise of all of them, uh, very similar once again, uh, but uh, due to the syntax of our data structures, it ends up being less code. So we once again have a hash set. Uh, we have a default dix, so uh, dictionary, so that we can do a plus equals on our dictionary. And then we have our list. So for name and names, uh, if the name's in our hash map, we want to do a plus one or plus equals one to it, and then uh, append our name plus our uh, stringified number to our list, else doing all the same thing. So updating our hash map, initializing, initializing our prefix uh, string t, initializing a boolean, and then looping through uh, each uh, um, integer value in our range and the length of name, updating our prefix, checking whether our prefix is in s and that we haven't inserted up to this point, and then once again at the very end, if it hasn't been inserted, uh, appending the full name. And at this point, returning our list. So this is the equivalent code in Python uh, to the Java and C++ solutions. However, for some reason that I couldn't really figure out, three of the 10 test cases fail for this Python solution with uh, runtime error. My guess is that there's some sort of uh, limit on memory that the Python solution exceeds whereas the C++ and Java solution doesn't. Um, I could be wrong there though. If any of the viewers are able to figure out what's wrong with my code, definitely leave a comment and I will mention that in uh, the next weekly Sunday episode. Um, but the Java and C++ solutions passed uh, 100%. And similar to the Java time complexity, the Python time complexity is big O of n s squared uh, because plus equals here has uh, linear time complexity as well. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.